Welcome to a brand new series of workshop video logs here in our brand new workshop. In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to some of the projects that we've got going on at the moment, some of the restoration work, and then we'll walk through to the room next door where we've got the full collection on display. So I'll show you some of the highlights of that and what we've been doing with those. This video is sponsored by Sysapp, and Sysapp is a real-time GPS tracker and trip mate, which is the ideal security device for classic motorcycles like this. So we've just installed it actually. Uh, we've fitted it today into the Marini here. So we're gonna test it and review it over the coming weeks and we'll come back to you on how we're getting on and show you how the app works and how reliable and easy to use it is. Uh, basically, it'll give you real-time information on the location of the bike, the routes you've taken, the miles, uh, and it will send you notifications if it's being moved without your permission, which is the key thing from a security point of view. So dead easy to fit, only took us five minutes. We've downloaded the app and we'll come back to you with, uh, with our thoughts on how it works. So there are three projects on the go in the workshop at the moment. The first of which I want to talk to you about is this. So this is the now restored rolling chassis for a 1978 Moto Marini 500 V twin. Now I've got a real soft spot for Moto Marinis, and my dad has. Uh, we've got three and a half Strada there from 1975. But this one purchased about three years ago uh, from a guy up near Carlisle, which when we got it, there was no paperwork with the bike. It was a barn find. It was very tatty, hadn't been run for over 20 years, uh, and was in, uh, had been kept in a pretty damp environment. It was in a rough state. And you'll see from the pictures that you can see that how, uh, how rough it was. But it was complete and it was all there. Now, it's a UK registered bike from new. We did know that. However, when we got there, there was, the guy suddenly came out and said, oh, I found an old logbook for it. And I discovered this bike was actually registered on my exact date of birth in my home county. So the chances of finding a bike like that are almost impossible. And the fact that it was a Marini, which I really love, it's a win-win. So this is a definite keeper. Chassis has all been... Uh, Rebuilt now, wheels repowder coated, frame done the same, starting to get that back together. Uh, and the next stage really is to crack on with the mechanics of this bike. So the engine has been totally stripped and it's been, uh, well, let's go and have a look. So I've just laid out the uh, engine cases here, uh, the barrels and the heads, so you can see where we're at with these. So the engine totally stripped, had the uh, cases in the oven to drop the bearings out. Internals, we had quite a bit of work done, so the crank has been reground. Uh, I'm going to fit a new roller bearing um, to this as well, which is a Ducati one, which we've had to have the altered to fit. Because the problem with these Marinis is you cannot get any bits for them. They were made in such low numbers, uh, pretty much bench built in Italy. Finding spares is almost impossible. There are a few sources, but very difficult to get bits for. So it's just trying to reuse everything that we can really as much as possible. The cases here, uh, barrels and heads have all been aqua blasted, local firm near to me called Malt Side Blasting that I can thoroughly recommend um, because these were in a very poor state, um, but they've come up really well. So they're looking probably even shinier than new to be honest, but it, they're gonna look really smart when they're done. Um, the heads themselves, uh, the valve seats redone, uh, new valve guides where required as well. I think you can see on this one, there's a new valve guide in there. So they've all been set up. The valves have been cleaned up. They're all ready to go. Flat heron heads on the motor marine is. So the combustion chamber, as you see, is actually in the top of the piston. It's one of the first motorcycles to incorporate that um, back in the early 70s. Uh, the 500 twins like this didn't come out until 1978. So it was the three and a halfs were available from the early 70s and the 500s uh, were later on. Just give you that bit more torque and usability. There's a, a bit, a bit, these have been rehomed uh, cylinders and the barrels, so they're all ready to go. Um, still a bit we need to look at. There's, these are renowned for cracking between the ports. Uh, between the valves here. So you can see there's a small crack on the head and that's their weak point, but we believe that would be okay to reuse. This one's had some damage as well. You can see where one of the piston rings has broken at some time and has been smacking up against the top of the head here. So the issue with this is that that could create hot spots 
when it's running for longer periods under, or under you know, great load or high revs. We think we're going to be all right with it as it is. So I'm going to sort of take a bit of a risk, but I think it's a calculated one, to leave that because finding another one of these, a replacement one, is a massive task. I am on the hunt for it, so if anyone knows where one is, let me know. But finding a 500 head, three and a half are easy to get, 350s, 500s, very difficult. The cases themselves, they've all been blasted, so they're beautifully clean now. So next task on these, so you can see how the V-twin work on this. Um, simply there, front, uh, front and back cylinders there. But what, next task on these is to get them in the oven uh, so we can drop the bearings back in. So warm them up, bearings will be in the freezer, and then uh, these will expand, and it should just give us enough uh, tolerance or expansion to drop the bearings back into these. Uh, then I've got a friend of mine who's looking for something to do over the winter and he's going to put the bottom end and these cases back together for me. I'll get this back in the new year and I'll start putting the, uh, the barrels and the top end back on and then we'll look to get it back into the rolling chassis. So that's a project that we're aiming to get back on the road for next spring. So you'll see more updates on this. The, the paintwork and the tinware has all been redone on this bike. Uh, and you'll see some pictures of how that's looking at the moment in its original London grey, which was quite a rare colour as well. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to actually getting this one back on the road next year and, and starting to use it, all being well. The second major project that we've got ongoing, in fact, probably the main project uh, out of all of them, is uh, the 1931 Vincent HRD uh, TJ model, which is a triangular frame and J stands for JAP. So it's, this bike has a, a twin port JAP single cylinder 500cc engine. Really, really rare beast. Probably, um, or thought to be less than half a dozen of these left with different types of engines. Probably only a couple with the twin port engine. We purchased this bike in October 2021 from the Bonhams auction at Stafford, the autumn sale. Now the bike was running. Um, at the time, but it lacked a bit of compression. So when we got the bike back, we had a good look at it. It started, but it wasn't running quite right and it, it did lack compression. So the thought was, cosmetically as well, it was looking tired. It had been restored in the late 80s. It was found under a bench where it had been there since the early 60s. There's a great history with this bike and the, the file that came with it is uh, immense, you know, it's two inches thick of history and and work that's been done on it previously. So we've got some great information about the bike. The previous owner found it and restored it late 80s, early 90s, and it had been used quite a bit since then. Um, however, it had been neglected a little bit. So it was the paintwork and the, uh, the frame were looking quite tired. The wheels, again, were old rims that were rusty underneath and were tired. And unfortunately, the engine, when we uh, strip that back to have a look what was going on. There was quite a few issues with that as well. So uh, in the end, we've ended up stripping it completely and uh, giving it a full restoration basically, um, which we know it would be good for another 20, 30 years then. The frame had a crack in it um, on one of the uh, lugs under the seat. So that's been welded up and repaired. Um, there was also some cracks on some of the shrouds, fork shrouds for the uh, spring boxes and things like that. They've been repaired. It all went off then to a guy called Alan Fox, who is uh, the master paint man, uh, based in Shirley near Solihull in the West Midlands. He soda blasted the frame, all the metalwork, tinware, um, 2K primer, then undercoat. Now, the frame and the forks have come up beautiful, uh, brake plates, etc. We had the wheels rebuilt separately at Central Wheel. They've done, they look great. There was a great bit of work involved for Alan on sorting these out because they didn't look too bad to be fair. But when we stripped the oil tank here, this was found to be, it was incredibly heavy, which is always slightly suspicious. Um, but when it was soda blasted, the whole thing was basically uh, almost done like a cake, iced in a resin, almost like a fiberglass resin, and it was also inside. That had to be stripped away. That showed there was some damage to the actual metalwork itself, so that was lead soldered and repaired accordingly. Then it was pressure tested, and it was still found to be full of pinholes, and then um, 
again, a little bit more work done on it, and now it's, uh, well, it's completely sorted. And it weighs probably a third of what it weighed before it went off to Alan. So, and he's painted that black in his original colour as it should have been, and it looks superb. Tank, same, soda blasted. These are in three panels, really. Well, four panels, top, two sides, that are soft soldered in, and then the base. Again, that was in pretty poor state once it had been uh, uh, stripped back. Again, any soft soldering or lead soldering done on that to sort it. This has also been lined with uh, Paul 15, I think we've used in there, just to seal it again to make sure it's, it's done. But he's done a fantastic job. And the good thing about Alan, he actually hand paints the coach lines on these. Um, and he's very particular. He even took various measurements of different Vincents to get the right width of this because it was slightly wider uh, how it was painted before, and that was actually incorrect. So he's done a top job on that, really pleased with it. Um, and again, the frame and the other bits he's done as well look superb. So they're all done and dusted. Mechanically, when we took the engine apart, uh, the cylinder head looked okay, it looked fairly good. Uh, the piston itself is a plus 20 uh, piston, looks pretty good. Um, but what we noticed when we uh, popped the head off, there was some heavy scoring inside the barrel. So two big scars down the inside, and you see from the pictures uh, that we're going to put up there, you can see what happened. And basically what had happened is these clips, these are actually more sort of sir clips that are in there now. There's a wire clip in there before. One of them had come away from where the gudgeon pin is held in, wedged itself between the piston and the barrel. And you can actually see some, uh, some light scoring here on the uh, piston, and it caused that massive scar on the inside of the barrel. So there, the compression had gone, it was basically no good. So, uh, spoke to a friend of mine, Sam Lovegrove, who is that's an absolute expert on pre-war bikes, and a friend near to him happens to be very good at lining or relining these types of barrels. And um, thankfully, he got it done pretty quickly for us. He uh, created a new liner, uh, inserted that into the original barrel here, so it's all made to measure for the original piston or plus 20 piston that we've got here. The rings look pretty good on that. We've got a new gudgeon pin to slip in there, and we put some circlips in there that should keep it more secure going forward. So that is uh, looking pretty good and ready to go. The bottom end of the engine, the big end and the crank looked in excellent condition, they were good. However, uh, there's a roller bearing on one side and a plain. Uh, phosphor bronze bush or bearing on the other side of the crank that had actually been shown to be moving within the crank itself so it was spinning around which puts it out of line with the oil feed which means that it was going to starve it of oil and cause all sorts of issues and there was loads of play on it as well so it's completely worn out that has gone off to uh, a guy a company called parts made again in bromsgrove west midlands and uh, Robert, who owns and runs that, he's going to make me a new phosphor bronze bush with the spiral oil way in it, all made oversized accordingly, so there's no more play in it and it's all acceptable. So that should sort that out. Looking to get that back in the new year. So in the meantime, we can start putting together the frame and the rolling chassis, if you like. So we're going to get another bench in here. We'll have that on the bench, start putting that together, ready for then in the new year, we can start on the engine and uh, again, Fingers crossed, all being well, this will be back on the road sort of Easter or springtime next year. So looking forward to that. We'll keep you up to date on how we progress. And there is a third project, a little mini project that's going on, which is behind Alex here. We've got this monkey bike. So this is a really, really early example, Z50 Honda. Um, I believe the paperwork with this shows that it was registered or manufactured in late 63, but not registered in the UK until 1965. Um, Rumour has it that some high-flying uh, lawyer or even barrister down in London in the swinging 60s used this to sort of bob around from his office to the court. Whether well, that's true or not, but it would have been really cool imagining a, a sort of guy in his robes and his wig going through Carnaby Street on one of these back in the day. But um, this belongs to a friend of mine He's got no mechanical knowledge or skills whatsoever. He just loves old bikes. He, um, he bought this about four years ago and it's never run. So um, my dad and myself, we just said we'd have a quick look at it for him, get it running again. 
Um, it doesn't need, he wanted it fully restoring to be fair, but it, I think we'll, we'll sort the engine cases out, put a lick of paint on them and the, uh, the barrel and the head, but the frame and the, the rest of it, we believe is original paint, so we're not going to even touch that. There's a few chips and things on it. There's a little bit come away under the tank. We'll give that some attention. We've got some match paint for that, but we're not going to touch the rest of it. Leave it with some patina. Just tidy this up and the, uh, the barrel and the head and get it running. So that's the plan with that. So uh, that should be gone in, a, in about a month's time when we get around to sorting it. But it'd be a cool little bike. And he only lives around the corner, so I'm going to ride this back to his house. I'm determined to take it on the road and give it a go. So, um, and see what, see what the fun is with a proper 50cc. So semi-automatic, aren't they, these? Three speeds. So yeah, should be good fun. And then the final bike we've got in the, the workshop area here is this. So this is a, uh, a Norton International. 500cc overhead cam, it was basically the, the Manx for the road, so single overhead cam on these were the Manx race bikes that won everything in that period were double overhead cam. And this is a bike from the main collection, but it's one that we're actually going to sell because when we come onto the main collection you'll see that we're going to focus purely on Vincent's. So we need to make some space before we get any more. Unfortunately the Norton, which we've had for six years now, and it's been a great bike, we've got to let this one go. And we'll do a separate video on this bike because what we're going to start to offer on the channel is uh, videos for bikes that are for sale. And we're going to start with this one. So we'll come on to that later and you'll learn more about that in a little while. Okay, so let's have a look at the main collection now. So we'll go into the back room. And in here, this is where we keep the bikes that are on the road and that we're going to use. So this is the predominantly made up of the Tom Jewell collection of bikes, which is made up of uh, nine Vincents, a BSA, AJS, and the Norton out there. And I am um, I have the honour and pleasure of being the curator and custodian of that collection of bikes and we've got them laid out in this workshop now previously they were in storage most of them so living in a carcoon but now we've got them in one place and we can use them access them maintain them and enjoy them and show them more often so that's the plan so v-twins on this side and then we've got the single cylinders around there first of which then i'll just sort of briefly go through what we've got and what we've got to do on them this is a 1937 AJS Model 2 V-Twin. So it's a side valve uh, 996 or CC, I believe, nearly 1,000 CC. This particular type of engine actually was the same as what was used in the, uh, or very similar to what was used in the Bruff SS80s. And you'll see the previous video we've done on the Bruff SS80 that we used to have in the collection. This is a fantastic bike. It had been buried in a barn for a very long time, restored about six years ago. We bought this one in an auction. It runs. Um, need to get a new brake cable for it because um, that's damaged. So uh, we'll get that repaired and we'll get it sorted. But this is another bike that we're going we're gonna to sell uh, because, like I said previously, we're going to focus purely on Vincent's. And we've got the three V-twins that we have in the collection here. So. These are all what you call Series C Vincents, so uh, made between 1950 and 1953. They are uh, a Black Shadow, which was the ultimate, top of the range if you like at the time, 125 miles an hour, 55 horsepower, polished ports, uh, 1 and 1 eighth uh, size carbs on those, um, give a little bit more power. This one I've used a lot this summer, I really enjoy riding that bike, it's very reliable, um, very smooth and uh, yeah really really enjoy using that and uh, as much as I can really we've had that bike again we've had all these bikes a number of years so that that is just a real pleasure 
The most recent of the V-Twins we bought, which was about three years ago, was this one. This is a, a Rapide. So, silver engine, 45 horsepower. The polished cases on these. So they're softer than the Black Shadow, as it were, but still a fast bike in its time. This is quite an interesting one because this is a touring spec bike. So it has a uh, 20 inch, or sorry, 19 inch front wheel as opposed to the 20 inch front wheel. So large, smaller diameter wheel, but larger tires to make it a bit more comfortable. These big steel mud guards painted instead of the alloy or Burma Bright ones on the standard model. High rise handlebars as well. But other than that, same as a standard Rapide, but these were quite popular actually. Um, most of these were made by and ordered for the police in Argentina. They had quite a large number on these. Um, they're just more practical to use and more comfortable than the standard Rapide setup. Um, that's a really good bike. Again, ridden that a little bit this summer as well and enjoyed that. Nothing really to do on that other than in the new year. Oil change on these, filter change. Just go over, give everything a little half turn with the Whitworth spanners and, uh, and off they go. This Rapide, um, when we purchased this, it got the wrong colour scheme on the tank and it needed a bit of uh, sprucing up. So we had this stripped back for sort of some cosmetic restoration. Also had alloy rims that were an inch too small or smaller than standard on the front and the rear. Um, which I didn't like. So we've, we've had new wheels made for these, new rims, painted centers in the correct size, 20 inch front, 19 inch rears. Um, and we had the tank done properly in the correct color scheme. This has been converted to have uh, 12 volt ignition with um, coil ignition is what the word I'm looking for. So it's got a coil ignition like the Series Ds. So it's been updated a little bit or modified a little bit in that respect. Got the battery off at the moment, so I'm going to get a new battery for it. Um, and this one, well, I haven't ridden this one for about a year because it's been in storage for over a year. So I'm going to charge the battery up. Probably will need a new battery, and we'll get this one on, out on the road and, uh, and give it a spin before the, the winter really sets in. So we can give it a blast. But I know this is a good bike, so um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting this one out and giving it a run round again and getting it up and going, being used, which is what the key thing is. We use all these bikes and we want to keep using them. So this new place here will allow us to wheel them in and out and get them being used. The one non-Vincent bike that we are going to keep in the collection is this BSA, which is a 1934 V-twin, overhead valve V-twin, very, very rare. It's a J3411, they're called. It's a 500cc overhead valve in lovely condition. Um, it's a really nice bike to ride actually. I've not ridden it as much as I would like to. Um, a little bit of work we want to do on this. There's a bit of an oil leak that we need to try and cure. Um, but it does run well and it does ride well. And uh, yeah, looking forward to, um, to getting this one out on the road a bit more because it's, like I say, it's been mainly sat in storage for the last 18 months. So this one will be out and about. I love some of the details on this PSA, these pie crust filler cap on the tank and on the oil down there. The, uh, just really nice. And what BSA also had in this period in the 30s, this is 34, were these quite unique uh, levers. So brake lever and clutch lever, this really accentuated curve and really beautiful. And they were, they were unique to BSAs at the time. So lovely details. It's a fabulous bike. These were actually first produced for the military, for officers. And um, I sold a few there and then they were made available to the public in 34 and I think they only made them for two years. Originally with hand change. So this is one of the very first bikes. So this was originally a hand change gearbox, which would have had a big rod up here with your lever on the tank. They attached this mechanism on top. So you can tell that that's a, an afterthought bolted on um, to allow it to become a foot change. So it's very wafting your foot around, but it does work, but it's not, not slick, shall we say, <laughs> to say the least, but it's a nice four speed box. The only thing we've done with this bike, since we bought it, is fit this uh, inline uh, oil tap at the back there, just to stop it wet something basically. So it's just hidden behind this mechanism at the top, just makes it a bit more usable, but lovely, lovely bit of kit. And we are keeping that because it's just too nice to sell. Can't get rid of that one. Then we've got single cylinder bikes over here. So these are all Vincents in this row, apart from the one at the end, which I'll come on to. So we've got series A's, B and C. 
examples of the 500cc single cylinder Vincent, so half the V-twin, if you like. Series C Comet, uh, which is the most common of all the sort of Vincents, if you like. Uh, again, this one's been in storage for a couple of years, um, was running fine. Needs a little bit of attention. I think there's a slight issue with the clutch on this, so I'm going to have the plates off at some point, inspect those and have a look at the clutch springs, make sure they're in good order. Runs fine other than that, so, but we'll have a little look at that in the coming months. Um, these are quite rare. This is a Series B uh, Vincent Comet. So at this point, they had 1949-50, they still had HRD on the tanks, which was dropped when they went to Series Cs because of the confusion. I think mainly in the American market, some people might have thought that stood for HD was Harley Davidson or some affiliation to them. So the HRD went. So this is one of the last bikes to carry that brand in. 500 single, immaculate condition, runs and rides beautifully. Nothing to really do on that other than enjoy it. Then we go to pre-war bikes. And we've got two Series A singles, uh, Meteor and a Comet. The only difference between the Meteor and the Comet really was that the, the Meteor was slightly softer in its tuning than the Comet. Um, there was other differences as well you could have, but this one was specified with what was called the TT guards, which were these lightweight guards as opposed to the standard painted steel ones. Um, and yeah, this, this was the first bike that we bought for the collection, actually, and I absolutely adore this bike. It is my favourite out of all of them, to be honest. It rides beautifully, it looks gorgeous, it's all correct, and pretty, well, pretty much all correct. There's a few fasteners on there that aren't correct, and this, uh, which we could change, like the petrol taps, if you really wanted to get into it. But um, other than that, it's all correct. Original engine frame, uh, gearbox combination, and the oil pumps on these have numbers as well. So they're all correct, back to match record, uh, factory records. And it is a glorious thing. I really adore this bike. The only one thing we do want to do to this um, is fit a valve for the oil on this as well because it does wet some very quickly. The gear driven on the uh, oil pumps on these can seep through quite quickly into the sump. So um, yeah, we'll fit we'll fit a anti-wet sump valve onto this bike to stop that happening. Other than that, um, she's good to go. I've ridden her for the second half of the summer. Spot on. No complaints there, which is good. This Series A as well is my, probably my second favourite bike because I use this quite a lot. In fact, I've used this all year. Ultra reliable, um, great fun to ride. It's a very wide tank, which is uh, actually an optional extra. That was fitted, we believe, in the, in the 1940s. It's a TT replica tank, so it's a genuine Vincent tank. All stainless steel, polished up, and uh, larger capacity breather on the top um, just to give it a bit more uh, well more usability if you like and more distance but it's uh, it makes it very wide when you sat on it but it's a lovely thing really nice and there's a video on this bike that we did a couple of years ago so you can watch that on the channel if you want to learn more about this one things to do on this nothing really other than change the oil in the new year um, in fact, there is a couple of little things. These bikes vibrate a lot, as do all old big British singles. So I've lost the uh, lever on the headlamp here for the Miller switch. That vibrated off uh, and shot off somewhere. And the other thing that I've noticed the other day was that one of the mounting bolts has come away from the bracket here, which goes into a threaded section on the girder fork at the top. So this, needs replacing, so I need to work out or understand what thread that is, uh, which I think is an old British cycle thread going in there to fit that. So other than that, she's, she's running a treat, and um, yeah, really, really like that, that bike. I love the pre-war pre -war bikes, and they're, yeah, they're great fun.
And then finally, at the end of this run of uh, exotic Vincents, we have this cute little Italian bike, which is a uh, 1957 MV Augusta, which despite its massive proportions of the cylinder head and barrel, is only actually 175 cc's. And it, it, which is typical of those lightweight post-war Italians, but you look at the size of the barrel and the head, it's actually bigger than the 500 singles next to it, or as big as. Um, but it's tiny, it's only 175cc. Um, gorgeous looking thing, very uh, practical little lightweight bike. This one is uh, one of the overhead valve versions, CSTE, I believe it's called. Um, they did do the overhead cam ones as well, CSTLs and the, uh, the Disco Volantes with the gorgeous big tanks, which were the really hot versions. And they're quite valuable, the Disco Volantes, actually. You 10 or 11,000 for one of those. Um, this is the more reliable, if you like, overhead valve version, the more uh, cooking version. But beautiful, pretty little bike. My dad bought this a couple of years ago. He's added some extra bits that were missing to it. It didn't have a carburetor. It was didn't have a speedo. The brake plates were missing, etc. It didn't have a chain guard. Sorted all that out. It wasn't registered either. So this has now been recorded on the official MV Augusta uh, register Storico in uh, in Italy. So it's on their file. It's been matched back to the records. So it's got a UK registration now. Um, but this one is just sold to a friend of his. So. His friend's uh, going to take this and enjoy it. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's off on its way soon. But this is our main room. Um, and this is where we're going to keep and, and look after the majority of the collection moving forward. So you'll get updates in future videos of what we've done on these bikes and, and when we're taking them out and sort of general maintenance that's required to keep them up and running.